The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain Long Man Simplified English Series Read by Pishichai Nupakao Chapter 14 The Storm About midnight Joe awoke and called the boys. There was a weighty stillness in the air that seemed to threaten something. The boys saw the friendly companionship of the fire. In spite of the dead head of the bracelet air, they sat still and expectant. Beyond the light of the fire, everything was swallowed up in the blackness. Presently, a wake flash of lightning dimly lit the trees for a moment and vanished. Another came, a little stronger, then another, then a faint moon came sighing through the branches, and the boys trembled, fancying that some spirit of the night had gone by. There was a pause. Now, a terrible flash turn night into day and show separate and distinct every little grass burnt that grew about their feet. It showed three white startled faces. Two a deep row of thunder went crashing across the sky and lost itself in the distinct a cold breeze sprang up. It shook all the leaves and scattered ashes about the fire. Another first flash lit up the forest, and a crash followed that seemed to tear the treetops right over the boys' heads. They held on to each other in terror in the thick broom that followed. A few big rain drops fell upon the leaves. Quick, boys, go for the tent! exclaimed Tom. They left away, stumbling over roofs in the dark. Each dishing in a different direction. A furious wind roared through the trees, making everything sing as it went. One blinding flash after another came, and row upon row of deafening thunder. And now, the rain pure down and the racing wind drove it in the sheets along the ground. The boys cry out to each other, but the howling wind and the rolling thunder drone. There was Italy. However, one by one they stretched in at last, and took shelter under the tent, cold, frightened, and streaming with water. The old soul beat about so furiously that they could not talk, even if the other noises had allowed them. The storm rose higher and higher, and presently the zeal tore loose from its first innings and went flying away on the wind. The boys seized each other's hands and feet. With many stumbling and brushes to the shelter of the great oak that stood upon the river bank. Now, the battle was at its highest. Under the castles, flashes that flash in the sky, everything below the branding trees. 
The river white with foam. The dim outlines of the cliff on the other side, seen through the rising clouds, and the veil of rain, stood out in the clean cut and shadowless distinctness from time to time. Some giant trees yield. In the fight and feel crushing through the younger's growth, the thunder came down in ear-splitting, explosive bursts, but lastly kind and unspeakably awful. The storm ended with one gigantic offer that seemed likely to tear. The isle, the island, to pieces, burn it up, throw it to the tree tops, blow it away, and defend every creature in it. All at on, all at one, and the same moment, it's what a wild night for homeless young heads to be out it. But. At last, the battle was over, and the force of nature retired, with vigor and vigor trees, and peace returned. The boy went back to cram a go- good deal of work, but they found that there was still something to be thankful for, because the great tea, which had been the shelter of their base. Was a rain now split by lightning. Everything in the camp, everything in the camp was wet through. The campfire has failed. Here was a disaster, for they were wet to the skin and shivering. However, they discovered that. To the fire had eaten so far up the great log against which it has been built that a few inch has escaped, waiting. They patiently work at it with leaves and bark gathered from the under sides of shelter log. Until they persuaded it to burn again, then they peeled on grated branches till they had a rolling blaze. They dried the flues and had a feast. After that, they sat by the fire and glorified their midnight adventures until morning. For there was not a dry spot to sleep on anywhere around. As the sun grew stronger, the boys fell sleepy, and they went out on the sandbar and lay down. They were soon burned out by the sun, and wearily began to prepare breakfast. After the meal, they fell stiff joint, and a little homesick. Once more, Tom saw the signs and tried to cheer up the pirates as well as he could, but they cared nothing for a marvel or circuses, or swimming or anything. He proposed that they should stop being pirates for a time and be red Indians for a change. They were attracted by this idea. It was not long before they were swift and strive from head to heel with black mud. All of them shaved, of course, and then they went dashing through the woods to attract an English settlement. Afterward, they separated into three revolves, 
drivers and sprang out upon each other from hiding places, which they threw war cry and kill and skin each other by thousands. It was a blue. It was a bloody day, and therefore was a satisfactory one. There a s e e m in camp. Two was supper time, hungry and happy, but now a difficulty across Indian tribe at war with each other could not break bread together without far without first making peace peace, and this was simply an impossibility without smoking and b i p Or peace. Two of r e s k i n almost was that they had remained pirates. However, there was no another way. So with us, much cheerfulness, as they could pretend, they called for the p u f f and took their. Puff, as it passed, with proper ceremony, they were glad that they had become redskins, for they found that they could now smoke a little without having to go and hunt for a lot of knife. They did not get sick enough to be relatively uncomfortable. They practiced consciously. After supper, with fair success, and so they spent a joyful evening.